Okay, leadership. Um, two main types and another one that you need to know about as well. Um, firstly, autocratic. So this person makes all the decisions. They do it their way. All right. If the players don't like it, that's tough. This person doesn't care whether the players like it or not. They're a dictator-style leader. All right. They don't want input from people. They're going to do it their way. They're going to keep control. All right. And they're going to be a bit of a disciplinarian. So we would use this in dangerous situations, for example. Um, we would also use this. Uh, males prefer autocratic leadership. All right. Um, and also uh, for people who are in the cognitive stages of learning, novices, it's easier for them to learn. However, older people as well um, also prefer autocratic. Democratic is where the leader um, takes on group decisions, all right, they take on input from the players, therefore they are player-centred, they focus on developing relationships and team spirit, they believe by involving the players in decision making that empowers them, it gives them responsibility and therefore they'll be more motivated. So that's the way that they work. They'll still make a decision at the end of the day though, so they, they'll take on people's opinions but they'll then decide whether that, those opinions were right or wrong and make their own decision. So democratic style is more useful with advanced performers, with smaller groups or individuals. All right. It might also be more useful with your um, autonomous learners all right, who have more input to give, who prefer more of an input and of, uh, women prefer democratic leadership as well. Laissez-faire isn't really applicable to sport much, so the laissez-faire leader will just let the players get on with it. Okay, so not really um, many examples of this in sport. How are leaders appointed in two ways, either emergent from the group, so they emerge from within, from the group, there are obvious advantages and disadvantages to that. They know the system, they know the players, they know how things work. Um, however, a prescribed leader would come in from outside and the prescribed leader would have advantage of bringing fresh ideas, everyone starts anew, people might be more motivated because of that. Theories, the trait theory of leadership is called great man theory. That was one of the things that it purported is that you had to be a man was one of the, the traits that you needed to possess. But the leaders are born, they are natural leaders, they have all those traits of being a good communicator and respected and authority and all that sort of stuff, they're born that way. The opposite of that is of course social learning, the fact that we learn to become a good leader. So these people grow into the role, they develop by watching others through modelling other coaches and other leaders. They'll um, take on those ideas and they'll develop their own style and get better as they go on. Right, Fiedler's model um, decides that there are two personality types of leaders. These fit into um, autocratic and democratic. Um, the relationship motivated leader is our democratic leader. Um, and the task motivated leader is your autocratic leader, focuses on just the task. Fiedler says that situational favourableness for the leader, how favourable is it for the leader to lead, depends on three things. So, how well the leader and the group get on, um, how well defined the task is, um, and how much power they have. So if, they, if all those things are good, there's good relationships, we have a well-defined task, we know what we're doing, we have good tactics and certain things like that. And I have a bit of power to reward or punish players, I'm in a more favourable position for me to lead. If those things are bad, I'm in a low situational favourableness. The crux of that is that Fiedler says you should be more task-orientated, autocratic, when the situation is most favourable and least favourable. You should be relationship orientated when the situation is moderately favourable. That kind of just shows those that um, the performance is better in a moderately favourable situation. Performance is better if you're democratic, alright, and it's better in most 
and least favourable situations if you are autocratic. Chaljurai's model says that um, there are impacts on, there are antecedents of leadership, um, which is the situation, the leader and the members, and there are outcomes of group performance and satisfaction. So it looks like this, so these are the antecedents here. So the situation gives the leader a required behaviour. The leader's natural style, autocratic, democratic, will influence how they actually behave. And the members' characteristics, the players, will have a preferred behaviour from the leader. Now the key thing is this middle section, right? Do, does the required behaviour and the preferred behaviour, do they match the actual behaviour? So if what I, if as a leader, if what I do, which is this actual behaviour, what I do matches what I had to do, what the situation demanded of me, the required behaviour, and I did it in a way that the players prefer, in a style that the players prefer, if they all match, then group performance will improve, I will improve the players' performance as a team, and the individuals will be satisfied as to how I did that. They'll be satisfied with me, the leader. Obviously, if those things don't match in the middle, then the group performance and individual satisfaction will go down.